You are watching Canadian Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. From Toronto, Ontario, I'm Catherine Bullock. Assalamu alaikum and greetings of peace. Coming up, a conversation with renowned UK scholar Tariq Modoud, who's here to talk at the Aga Khan Museum on rethinking secularism and multiculturalism. But first, some news headlines. Judge orders hearing into Darshan Singh's dismissal from Senate. Indigenous chiefs angry and distressed during meeting with RCMP. New Muslim Youth Council probes access to mental health resources. U.S. Capitol riot panel blames former President Trump for insurrection. Now the details. A federal court judge has announced a new hearing into the dismissal of the Senate's first visible minority executive. Darshan Singh was fired from the Senate in 2015, just nine days after he reported allegations of racial discrimination to his supervisor. Singh, who is of South Asian descent, claims this was because of his race and colour. He took his case to the Federal Public Sector Labour Relations and Employment Board, but it was dismissed last year. Federal Court Justice Alan Diner says the dismissed case had several reviewable errors the most important of which was to rely on an informal Senate investigation that interviewed 12 white senators, but not Singh himself. The heads of an Indigenous group say their members expressed anger and distress during a meeting with the RCMP. They were discussing the RCMP's response to a pickup, drive, pickup truck driver who allegedly hit four people during a memorial march Saturday. Garrett Dan, who is also the organisation of the march, says the Mounties are investigating if charges should be laid. In a news release earlier this week, the RCMP referred to the driver as, quote, impatient. He turned himself in, but is not in police custody. Dan says the driver allegedly told marchers to, quote, get over residential schools. He says that this is like asking a vet to get over the war. A new Muslim Youth Council in Waterloo Region, Ontario, is making it their mission to have mental health supports more accessible in their community. The council holds eight high school and university students. They will look at how Islamophobia, racism and xenophobia may create the need for mental health resources for Muslim youth. Council member and high school student Abdul Hasib tells local media that such an initiative is needed in racialized communities where a stigma is attached to mental health. The council is part of the Coalition of Muslim Women of KW's Youth Leaders for Change program. The US House panel investigating the January 6th Capitol riot laid out its evidence yesterday night, placing the blame squarely on the shoulders of former President Donald Trump. January 6th was the culmination of an attempted coup, a brazen attempt as one rioter put it shortly after January 6th, to overthrow the government. The violence was no accident. The committee's months-long investigation contains evidence from more than 1,000 witnesses, including key figures in Trump's attempt to maintain the presidency. They say Trump encouraged his supporters to walk down to the US Capitol where the proceedings to certify Joe Biden's victory were underway. At least nine people died during the rioting and more than 100 police officers were injured. And that's it for the news. A lot of debate has been going on over the last decade or two about secularism and multiculturalism with pushback from people on the left saying it's not going far enough and pushback from people on the right saying it's going too far. We are honoured to have with us today a scholar who has been investigating these issues for over, well, we won't say how long, a uh, visiting scholar from the UK, Dr. Tariq Madud. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the show. Walaikum assalam, Cathy. Thank you for joining us. I know you're here as a visiting scholar just a couple of months and you've squeezed in some time for us. You're giving a talk at the Aga Khan Museum uh, this coming Wednesday. Let me just give the details. It's June 15th, uh, 6.30 onwards. And the title is Rethinking Secularism, Truly Inclusive Multicultural Citizenship. So can you give us a sneak peek? What, what are you going to be saying? Yeah, well, the, the origins of my thinking on this go back to the 1990s, for instance, following the controversy around the book, The Satanic Verses, 
and more generally the demand by Muslims for recognition. Mm. Recognition not as ethnic minorities or um, as people of color as it already existed in Britain uh, up to that time, but as a religious group, as Muslims. Mm. And some people, mainly from uh, the liberal left, responded by saying, oh yes, we understand why Muslims might find the Anglican establishment, you know, the Church of England's special uh, role uh, in relation to the state and the monarchy. We can understand why they would be alienated by this. Mm -hmm. And therefore, to be truly inclusive of Muslims, we should disestablish the Church of England. I thought that was completely a misunderstanding. Mm. Firstly, they offered no evidence that Muslims were actually alienated by the Church of England establishment. Mm. Muslims are alienated by a number of things about British society, of course. There is Islamophobia, and we'd had this controversy at the time about the satanic verses but no mm. muslim had ever said actually the problem is that there is an established church in this country and in fact no muslim has said it subsequently so this was a, a fabricated argument without uh, any uh, evidence about muslims muslims were just as it were a cardboard cutout mm. for a left secularist argument so can we just uh, fast forward it a little bit and maybe make it Canadian? Uh, you know, Canada, I know you've been coming to Toronto for years and being engaged with the debates about multiculturalism. Can it, doesn't Canada pride itself on, on having a, a different kind of way forward, the multiculturalism model? How do you um, articulate with that the argument? Yeah, well, if we actually look at Canadian multiculturalism, there's a lot to admire and it has been world leading. But actually, it has not been very good in terms of religious groups. Mm. It's been much better in relation to what we might call post-immigration ethnicity, in relation to uh, indigenous people. I say it's been better, but of course, that's not to say it's been ideal. Mm. And perhaps in relation to linguistic minorities and the binational status of French people. But in relation to Muslims, it's actually not been very accommodative and sometimes as in the case of quebec it's been far from accommodative and at the same time in the last few years we've had a rising tide of islamophobia uh, worldwide including mm. in canada and there have obviously been some violent murderous episodes mm. so actually i don't think uh, canada can take much pride in its accommodation of religious minorities, certainly not in the case of Muslims. And those people who think that secularism is all about separation of church and state are mm. actually quite mistaken. Um, that's not a proper understanding of secularism, either in Canada or in most other countries, possibly so only in France. Yeah, we should definitely get you to tell us what you mean by that. But I just want to squeeze in one little question before that. When saying Canada hasn't done very well with its, or maybe that has done, needs to do better on with religious, uh, especially Muslims, I wonder if you can give some practical examples because I know a lot of Muslims who feel very uh, happy to take advantage. They ask for Eid, they ask for Friday off because of this concept of reasonable accommodation. And so um, I don't know if people on the ground uh, see, see what you see. Right. Well, I think if we look at... Um multiculturalism, it's centered on the idea that people's uh, cultural and other kinds of identities are respected, not just tolerated, but respected. They are included into the country's understanding of itself and appropriate institutional accommodation is made. You've given one example, mm. certain days off, okay, that's that's good, but that's really just a kind of thin end we mm. need we need a lot more than that um i mean some years ago um the ontario uh, governor unilaterally closed down the possibility of there being um muslim adjudication 
Mm. Um, you know, what was referred to as Sharia councils and so on, a bit of a misnomer, but uh, nevertheless, arbitration mm. by, um, by muftis uh, on the basis of an understanding of Islam was ruled uh, as impermissible. In mm. Britain, we haven't taken that step. We think it is it is tolerable. It must, of course, be within the law, and there, there ought to be certain safeguards. Obviously, it shouldn't be a complete laissez-faire because mm. women get exploited. We know that. Mm. So, but nevertheless, if Muslims have a uh, a desire, you know, and it's a voluntary thing, have a desire to have a a marriage recognized or a divorce validated by uh, a Muslim authority and not just by civil law, that that should be permitted. And I, I take that to be a good part of a multicultural accommodation of Muslims. And that's why you're saying rethink secularism. That's why you're saying this is what a truly inclusive multicultural citizenship would be. That's like the essence title of your talk. That That's right. So secularism as we know it with with the exception of places like france which are really quite exceptional always has a relationship with organized religion sometimes with just one organized religion or even within that one religion just one church lutheran or anglican or catholic multiculturalizing that means more inclusion i.e the inclusion of groups that are currently excluded mm. or have a less privileged status. It's not about dispossessing Anglicans or Christians. It's about inclusion. It's mm -hmm. additive, not mm -hmm. subtractive. Mm -hmm. So I think that the idea that secularism is about stripping Christians of what they have historically enjoyed because Muslims are, are so-called alienated by that, um, is a misnomer mm. and actually is a little bit of a political dis deceit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this seems to me uh, a very good idea that you're saying, expand it and allow public institutions to interact with religious bodies. But is it controversial? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, because there is a kind of liberal left position which says that the state should be culturally neutral. And multiculturalists, of course, deny that because they want the state to be culturally inclusive, not neutral, inclusive, positive inclusion. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, they find religion a little bit exceptional. And I think that actually is just a secularist bias. Mm -hmm. Religious groups have as much right to recognition and inclusion as groups defined by race, ethnicity, gender, sexualities, and so on. I think the secularist bias against religious inclusion, you know, groups who self-identify in terms of a faith identity rather than, say, a color identity, um, that's just a bias. We, we, no multiculturalist should tolerate that. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time, but we did say it was a sneak peek. If people who want to know more should attend your talk at the Aga Khan Museum on June 15th at 6.30. And there is a live streaming option if people can't drive there. So we, we wish you well for the talk. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you and bye-bye. Thank you for watching Canadian Muslim News. If you like what we do, please share, like and subscribe. Stay safe and God bless.